Hello everybody, this is Laura Susan Johnson, and I'm hoping that today is finally the day when I can do Erin Brockovich. I've been wanting to do this whistleblower mini-series of movies, movie reviews, since April. Um, I got sick in April, of course. Um, I don't know what happened, but my eyes swelled. I still have a little bit of residue swelling, a little bit, but not too bad. Um, it was just horrible, uh, and really bad headaches that were intractable. Um, but I recovered from that, and then I did my Silkwood review in June. I was still a little bit sick, but not too bad, and then in July, I started, in late June, sorry, I uh, found out that my thyroid stopped working after 20 plus years of being on the very low end of normal, you know what I mean? Um, get your blood work done and they say your thyroid's okay, but it's really low, you know. It's not low enough to get you on medicine just yet, but it will quit eventually and that runs in my family. Uh, and then I found out that I am borderline diabetic. My A1C runs high, and it has run high for about three years now, but I finally have a new doctor, and instead of screaming at me about my weight loss and weight gain going up and down over the last five years, um, she put this new doctor, not the old doctor, she put me on a blood sugar regulator, so I'm really trying to cut sugar out of my diet, so I hope that it'll work. Um, please, in advance, excuse me if the camera is all over the place. I chopped my hair off again because of the summer heat. Most of you probably realize what a horrible summer it's been, and I cannot wait until the cold weather comes back. Once the 4th of July is over, I, I hate summer. So anyway, let's get on with Aaron Brockovich, finally. to admit it's my least favorite out of the four whistleblower movies that I want to review. Um, it's not because it's a bad movie, it's not because it's not a compelling movie, 
it's not because Julia Roberts isn't a good actress. Actually, I like a lot of her movies. I really do. It's mainly because the whistleblower in this movie isn't Aaron. Um, Aaron is the main character. Her story is very good and it's very heroic. She rose from a nobody to infamy and she is a hero in my opinion. Now I can understand she was a single mom. She'd been married to two assholes who obviously didn't pay child support after the divorces and she had three small children she needed to support. I completely get it. You know, I completely get it. But, you know, it was always, I want to raise. I need benefits. Um, I'll tell you this. I'll give you this if you let me have my job back. Um, her and Ed Maisry, who's played by Albert Finney, obviously, you know, what we have here is a failure to communicate, especially when she first, um, when she opened the file that he asked her to open regarding Hingley. She asked him while he's on the phone with his wife doing pillow talk at work, um, she asked him, can I go or can I investigate this, research this, and he thought she meant right there in the office with him. But what she intended to do was to drive to Hingley. Um, didn't communicate this very well to Maisry. And she drove to Hinkley, interviewed a whole bunch of people, including a, I guess, a professor at a university. Maybe, it, maybe that was in L.A. It might have been UCLA. found out about a chemical rust inhibitor called chromium-6, which PG&E, the big corporation, used in Hinkley, and it leached into the groundwater back in 1966, and um, she also interviewed the Hinkley residents asking why uh, they didn't want to sell their houses to PG&E and why there was a bunch of blood tests and other medical stuff mixed in with the real estate stuff. Because she doesn't really know stuff about all that, you know. So, when she returns to Ed Maisry's office after a week of investigating Hinkley, she doesn't really interview PG&E during this but she's in Hinkley for a week or driving back and forth. I don't know if she stays at motels or anything. But you see her in several outfits while she's interviewing UCLA people and the water board in Hinkley and or the county water board. Maybe that's in Barstow or someplace like that. Um, and it's really odd. He fired her after she didn't show up to work for a week. She gets into a bitch fight with this gal named Brenda, played by Conchetta Farrell. Uh, I really hated the uh, fat phobia that uh, Aaron displayed towards Brenda. But, again, I guess she is I don't know. I just there were a lot of character traits I loved about Erin and there was a lot of character traits I didn't quite like about her. Um just overly defensive overly aggressive boss would not have put up with that in the real world. Um in the real world, it doesn't matter if he lost the case or not. He wouldn't have put up with her, you know, talking back to him the way she does, slamming doors the way she does, 
cursing him out, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, he just wouldn't have. Uh, let's face it, we've all been there. This movie is about how she and two law firms brought down a giant, and rightly so, because this giant lied to this tiny little town full of innocent people about a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous carcinogenic chemical that had leached into their groundwater. And the real whistleblower in this movie is Tracy Walter's character, Charles Embry, who doesn't show up until uh, towards the end of the movie, after several scenes of him kind of skulking around and looking at her funny, kind of like a stalker. It does seem quite, you know, creepy. But when he finally talks to her after the creep factor goes away, he has a lot of good stuff to say and he helps her crack the case or he helps, he just helps a lot. So he is the real honest to God hero because without his testimony, without his facts, that he presents and his paperwork that he did not destroy. You know, very disobedient employee, thankfully. Um, they would they would have lost. I hope I have put something in my notes. Let's just see here. Binding arbitration. No jury, just a judge. Uh, a judge that takes large groups. Um, And without Charles Embry and his facts that he had to present, they would never have been able to prove the lies that PG&E told to the townspeople of Hinckley. And whatever happened to Charles Embry after all this uh, victory against PG&E, I don't know. I know one thing, though, most of the time, whistleblowers will either end up having to give up a career that they love, or they end up dead. Um, no telling. So, uh, he might have changed his name and moved away somewhere where nobody would go after him. I mean, 333 million bucks is quite a big chunk of change. So, it is a good movie, and it's very fun, you know, to see a big giant taken down. And the cast is very good. The performances are all great. Julia Roberts does a great job with this character. I think that she deserved the Oscar she got. So, um, I don't know what else I could add to this. It's a short review, I know. Shorter than I usually do, especially after I edit. Next up will be a Chris Evans movie called Puncture. And that's a movie I absolutely love. So, we'll see you next time. I'm really hoping that I can start doing twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. But, we'll have to see. It all depends. Anyway, we'll see you later.